A couple of years ago, we reported on an audacious project to try and bring back one of Wiltshire's most charismatic birds. The Great Bustard hadn't been seen here on Salisbury Plain for 160 years. So, has the project worked and has the Great Bustard managed to re-establish itself? Joe Crowley's been finding out. I'm here on Salisbury Plain in the privileged position of being able to help release a Great Bustard chick back into the wild. Now these fellows were originally hunted to extinction in the 19th century, but today's launch is all part of a determined campaign to bring them back. And there he goes, he's off. And the amazing thing is this chick actually started life back in Russia. And of course our cameras were there right from the beginning to follow the remarkable journey, all part of bringing the Great Bustard back to Salisbury Plain. David Waters is a man on a mission. Every spring, he travels to southwest Russia on a quest to bring the world's heaviest flying bird back to England. The Great Bustard is unquestionably one of the most spectacular birds in the world. And especially for me coming from Wiltshire, where it's the bird that features on the county coat of arms and so many other badges and symbols, it's just the jewel in our crown of biodiversity of nature, which is just missing. This is just a unique opportunity to, to be able to put back um, this wonderful bird back onto the plains of, uh, of Wiltshire and indeed across the, the whole of southern England. A thousand kilometres from Moscow is the region of Saratov, a vast plain that's perfect habitat for great bustards, the second largest population in the world. La, 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 la. In spring, they make striking figures in the landscape. It's a time for courtship and mating. The males, who can weigh over 20 kilos, puff themselves up to attract the females. If their posturing pays off, then a clutch of eggs is laid. But the nests are sighted on dangerous ground. This region is one of Russia's principal bread baskets, and nesting coincides exactly with the start of cultivation. Fields like these are typical of the sort that female bustards will lay their eggs in here in Saratov. Now the problem is when the fields undergo cultivation, lots of eggs are destroyed. But even if the tractor driver manages to see the eggs and drives around them, the disturbance around the nest site is such that the female almost inevitably abandons the eggs. And it's these eggs, which are worth nothing to the natural population, that we take and incubate and use to provide the stock for the reintroduction to England. To find those eggs, David has enlisted the help of local farmers. If I give you this mobile phone, when you discover a great busted nest, could I ask you to use this telephone? We're trying to protect the great busted nests. I will do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> as soon as David gets the call, he must move fast to ensure the tiny embryos inside are kept alive. It's a precious cargo, and he's limited to just 60 eggs a year by the Russian government. At the Saratov field station, the eggs are checked for heartbeats and placed in incubators. And then it's just a matter of waiting. Around six weeks later, and the bizarre business of rearing the chicks begins. A young great bustard can't feed itself. It needs to be bill fed by the mother, bill to bill. Now you can do that with your fingers, but you'll end up with the bird which is imprinted on humans. And it's maybe all right for a pet or for a zoo, but no good for a reintroduction. So we have quite elaborate processes to rear these birds without them ever seeing people. We use a glove puppet, a replica of a female great busted head, which is operated from behind a curtain. And you just poke the, the puppet through, and you can feed the chicks that way. And if there are any occasions when we have to go into the, the chick rearing room, normally to clean up and so on, we wear a, a rather ridiculous looking costume, which is designed solely to disguise the fact that we're humans. It doesn't look like anything else. It's, it's, I always describe it as, as looking like one of Doctor Who's enemies. For the small team of locals involved in the Bustard project, the effort is well worth it. 
Конечно, привязываюсь, особенно если как в этом году их один-два. I do get attached to the chicks. They all have characters, and I know each one individually. But from the beginning, I know they're going to leave my care. So I try to avoid emotions. Two months on, and David's leaving the plains of Saratov behind and taking with him chicks destined for their new home in England. For David, the project is also about helping to monitor Russia's own great bustard population. The other activity the Great Bustard Group is really committed to is to try to answer some of these questions about the Great Bustard in Saratov. If we don't have the resources ourselves or the expertise, we'll try and bring other people here, um, people with the experience and the expertise. And really, once we've got that knowledge, that's when we can start effective conservation. Because at the moment, I think there are more questions than there are answers. After an exhausting two-day journey, the birds finally arrive at their new home on Salisbury Plain. It's a great sense of relief for David. We've got the birds, they're all in good health. Um, it's pretty good going to ship isolation reared wild young birds from uh, the far south of Russia with a 100% survival rate. So, um, you know, we're very pleased with that. It's a good result, but I'm pretty much ready for some, uh, for some sleep tonight. But freedom is still some time away for these birds, who will now have to spend 30 days in quarantine. At last, time for the release. And each bird is fitted with a satellite transmitter, so their movements can be carefully monitored. Since the first release back in 2004, there have been plenty of problems and setbacks. Skeptics have said the reintroduction won't work. Certainly, out of 64 birds that have been released, it's thought that only 20 have survived. The others, probably victims of predators like foxes. The good news is that this year, one of the birds produced a clutch of eggs, the first time that this has happened in the wild in Britain for 175 years. Now, although the eggs failed to hatch, it's proof the birds are settling in. The hope is that by next year, they'll breed successfully and re-establish themselves as an integral part of our native wildlife. We have a, a sort of a mindset, I think, in the UK that if you want to see exotic wildlife, you go on a holiday to the Galapagos or to the plains of Africa or something. The Great Bustard is as spectacular as anything you'll see anywhere else in the world. And through this project, you can see them up on Salisbury Plain.